Hi guys, uh, welcome back. This is part 15 of our Dreamweaver series. Um, create a set website from scratch. What I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've set up the guts of the contact us page. Um, what I've done is I've created the page and I've added in just a couple of the paragraphs. And you'll notice a slight little bit of difference here in the fact that I have included a phone number here with a link you're probably wondering why the hell would I link a phone number but um, this is the dawn or the age of the smartphone so if you visit this site via smartphone you can actually this link is clickable so that you can actually make a call uh, from that link without having to go and remember the number and dial it in it'll automatically do it so in order to do that you just you're adding in a normal ahref tag um, and instead of giving it a link what you're doing is you're giving it the telephone property which is tel uh, followed by a call on and then whatever number it is you're you want to call and then between the tags between you close out your a tags over here which are a forward slash or your forward slash a uh, and then between the two a tags you put in whatever you want to appear as the link uh, so that's pretty much that much done um, and that should work for anybody using a smartphone they should be able to make a call by clicking on that on their, with their smartphone so the next thing we want to do is we want to add in our contact form so as I said before uh, we're going to do this uh, by adding in just one of the free ones. Um, I'm not going to go into the big deal about coding them up now and setting them up with PHP and the whole lot. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a standard contact form which can be generated by going to a couple of different places but this is the one that I use. Um, it's foxyform.com uh, and what you do is you can give it its parameters here um, if you open up the show further options just to make sure that you have everything that you need now you can set the required fields here by just adding a tick to the box so we want the name to be required field we want the email address to be a required field uh, you can the rest are optional um, your phone number is a required field but it's up to yourself whatever other ones you want to, to set now here is where you style it like your like your web page um, and because we used a grey background on the web page, um, we want to kind of style this one to the same theme as our web page. So the color on ours uh, for our background color was F0, 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 which is a grey. And our font color um, is the grey as well. But I, I think I'm just going to leave that black for now. Um, or actually, no, we'll change it to the same color. No, we won't. We leave it black because uh, if I leave that too grey, uh, if I change it to grey, it may not show up right. So we leave the font color as the standard, uh, and then you can change your font style to whatever style you want. Ours is Arial anyway, so I'm just going to leave it as it is, and our font size, um, I think, is going to be normal. Um, and what you do then is it's going to ask you for the email address that you want all the email to be generated that the form is going to generate to send to, to whichever email you specify here so for our one it's Bertie's uh it'll be email address will be info at Bertie's Pitchingbutt.com that we'll be sending the email addresses the email to but as I said I already have the code from the other one um, I'm not going to go ahead and get that. What you would do here is you click on create formula formula, and it'll give you a pop-up for the code which you should be pretty familiar with by this stage um, and what you do is you select the code and you copy it and you paste it into your document wherever you want it to appear. So as I said I've already created my one um, from the previous from the website that I did already so I want it to appear after the first paragraph so I'm just going to paste the code in here and as you can see it created this is the code as it as you get it when you're when it comes up in the pop-up um, and these are the dimensions that it sets it to so if I click refresh in the page 
we'll get up the contact form here. But what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of styling to it because I don't like it thrown up against the left hand side there. So what I want to do is I want to place this into its own div. So what we want to do is we want to select the code here and we want to go up and insert uh, layout objects and div tag and again we want to make sure it's wrapped around our selection so what we'll do is we'll give it an ID of form uh, because it's the only one that's going to appear in the site so I'm just going to give it an ID rather than a class so we click on the new CSS rule and there's our rule for dot form so we click on and it's going to be created within our style.css sheet so we click on OK and the first thing we want to do is we want to give it a width so we're going to give it a width of 400 pixels and we want to give it a height of 485 pixels we don't want to give it a float property but what we do want it to do is we want it to be in the middle of the browser so if you remember back to the property we did earlier on when we were given the wrapper to get it to center in the browser we give it a right value of auto and a left value of auto um, and what I want to do is I want to give it a padding top as well of 15 pixels uh, and a padding bottom um, not a padding bottom sorry a padding right and a padding left of 10 pixels each that's just so that it kind of comes away from the edge of the browser or from the edge of the, the div so the form itself is contained centrally within it uh, and what I also want to do is I want to set the background color of the div so that it appears the same color as we set for our our form so um, and I, I want to give it a border as well uh, what we maybe give it a little border of um, so to, in order to give it a border here this is the border tab in the CSS so we're going to have them the same for all so we're going to give it a solid line we're going to give it a width of one pixel and maybe if we give it a color of maybe a slightly dark darker gray um, and we want to give it also a background color and the background color we're going to give it in this case is the um, is the gray that we gave our our um, form and that's the the F0 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 and we forgot to give it this little hashtag or pound sign whichever you're comfortable with so we click on apply there and again nothing shows up in the browser because we haven't applied the actual rule so if we click on OK there and away she goes into the middle so file save all and we want to upload our contact page on our CSS style sheet so if we put that up we we'll click on no and we refresh that in the browser we'll go with we don't need that page anymore but if anybody wants it it's foxyform.com and the beauty of these ones is it doesn't persecute you with spam you're not limited to some of the ones only limit you to maybe a hundred uh, emails a month uh, and anything after that then you have to pay for your I get absolutely no emails from these people uh, the foxyform.com you will not be persecuted with spam that I can guarantee you because I use it myself uh, on some of the sites that I that I do my own sites so close that page so if we go and we refresh the browser and we open up our contact us page and as you can see there's our paragraph now one thing you will notice in this is if you click on the oh I forgot to change the color of the of the form so we'll go back and do that first of all so the color is here um, I oh know because I used it from a different browser from a different website that I had a different color scheme on it's overwriting what I specify here with what I specified when I actually typed in the code so I'm not going to be too bothered about that for now you know yourself how to change it I'm not going to be worried about it um, what we can do is we change the background color of the div to the same brown that's in that and the brown was I think I have it here I do the brown was um, 
that color there. So if we press enter, save that, put up the style sheet, and refresh. And there she goes. There's a nice little border around it as well. But what I was going to discuss with you this time was um, if you click on the link within a normal browser on your PC or laptop or whatever for the phone number, nothing will happen because it's it's a PC and not a smartphone, so it's not going to do anything. So, but as you can see, we have our form here, and you can type away in that you can put whatever your details are, and then you click on the send the message. Now, the beauty of this one is that it comes with um, it comes with the captcha, the anti-spam, so that uh, no malicious or, or spam emails will be generated from your um, from your form. Uh, it actually requires a human input in order to be submitted, so you won't be persecuted there. And it means that you don't actually have to have your physical email address anywhere on your website. Um, if you have your web, your email address actually typed out on your website, you're leaving yourself open to spam because there are spam bots that trawl the internet looking for uh, email addresses that are either embedded into pages or are actually just physically typed onto the page uh, to absolutely persecute you with spam. So this is one way of combating it by installing uh, a contact us form. Uh, the other reason for the contact us form as well is not everybody has email set up on their computer. So in order for them to send you an email, it means that they have to go and log into their Hotmail account and everything. Whereas if you have a standard contact form here, they can just send their message directly from here. And they don't have to log into any online email account. So it just makes it so much easier I mean, more for more than one reason. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to move on to our Google Maps. Now, Google Maps is pretty straightforward. So we go to Google, and along the top there you'll see Maps. So if you click on that, and you obviously with your own country, you know exactly where you want to go to. But as I said, I'm in Ireland, so, and I'm in Sligo. So there's Sligo there. And if we zoom right in, uh, Bertie's Pitching Pot is actually out on the north side of Sligo Town. It's actually here. So now I'm still waiting on the details to come back for this business. I've submitted the business to it and it hasn't actually come in. I haven't received the, the postcard yet. But when you submit a business to to Google Maps, uh, you put in all the details and you verify. You have to verify that you are who you are um, and that you have the authority to um, to use the, the uh, business listing. So what they do is they send you out a postcard. Uh, to confirm who you are uh, and it contains a pin and you'll be asked to type in that pin when you create a, a Google Places account. So in this case here um, we're just going to, I'm just going to center the map here and just uh, click on what's here and the nearest thing that will come up is whatever house or, or near hand because as I said I haven't received the postcard yet. So we have that there and we want to link this page we want this map to show up on our page so what we need to do is up here in the link section here if you click on that and it'll give you the shortcut and it'll also give you the iframe now that's not good to us because we want to customize it to suit our page so just here you see customize and preview embedded map and what we want to do is we want to set this to the width of our page so if you click on custom there and set that to is it 630 pixels uh, and what that does is it, it widens out the map to the width of our page and it'll center where we are exactly in it. Now if this was an actual business that you had you'd have a little pop up here with your or a little bubble there with all your business information and you can go ahead and paste that in but for our purposes because as I said I haven't received the postcard yet, we're just going to go ahead and and copy and paste in this code. So again, select all the code, right click, copy, and I already have it done from the previous one, so I'm just going to copy mine in. So again, copy, and in, your, in Dreamweaver then, um, as I said, I added in a second paragraph here. So at the end of that paragraph, if we just paste in the code, 
click refresh and gonna save all and we'll put up the contact us page now if you're just putting up the page that you're working on there is a shortcut to it you don't have to go back in here and select the contact us page and hit the blue button what you can do is the shortcut for putting up the page that you're currently working on is control shift and U and then all you have to do is select no and it'll put it up so if we go back to our page now and we refresh it we have our contact us page with our contact form and our Google map and that's pretty much it in terms of the Google Google map now as I said you need to go into Google and you need to create an account for Google places if you want to have a business listing in it um, and the Google places listing uh, as I said you have to have your Google account uh, set up so but this is what it looks like as you can see Bertie's pitch and put it has I haven't received the to put in the pin yet um, it has been sent out but because of Christmas it's taken just that little bit longer to get through I have a few more waiting on as well as you can see there but that's pretty much it so you go to Google places and if you already have a Google account you can just sign up for it um, or as create a Google account and um, do it from there but that's pretty much it for now guys um, I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything else to this tutorial series um, but for the time being um, I think I'm just going to call it. Uh, if I think of anything further on down the line, I might add to it. But I think that's the end of the series for now. Uh, if you've watched the entire series, thanks a million for watching it. And uh, I do appreciate any comments, be they a criticism or otherwise. Uh, so if you want to leave anything in the comments section below. And be sure to uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future tutorials. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do for the next tutorial. Uh, I may do something with um, HTA, HT access uh, and blocking access to your root folder on the internet or on the yeah on the internet. So uh, we we see what happens from there. But for the time being, I think that's kind of the end of this tutorial series. If there's anything else you want, kind of add it to it. You can always add it in the comments section and maybe we can look at expanding on it again um, or if you have any ideas anyways thanks a million guys and be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up